Hi, I'm Emily Caggiano and this is another episode of Dissecting with Emily. So recently we have been talking about the T-Rex holotype specimens such as this maxilla that we got on loan from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History and we have been comparing it to this specimen which is from the American Museum of Natural History in New York. So today we wanted to talk about kind of an obscure bone known as the ectopterygoid and its unusual connection that it has to Jurassic Park. And so to actually see this bone better we're going to tilt up this cast because you can't do this with the original specimen. So right here is the right ectopterygoid of the holotype specimen. It sits right between this bone called the pterygoid and the edge of the skull. And what this bone does is it acts as a brace um, for the palate because T-Rex engaged in such high biting force activities, it needs that extra support uh, when engaging in those activities to keep the palate from fracturing. And one interesting thing about this specific specimen is that if you look, the left ectopterygoid is actually in position where it's supposed to be. Um, but if you look over here on the right side, the ectopterygoid is actually missing. And so this actually has to do with the connection to Jurassic Park. So to look at that, we're going to tilt this guy back down, come around to the other side. So if you look here, this bone is actually not supposed to be here. Um, and if you compare it to this ectopterygoid, you can see that it's got this rounded area right here, which corresponds to this spot right here, as well as this kind of phalange area, which is down here. And this shows that the ectopterygoid actually floated from its original position um, up into this unnatural spot. So what does this have to do with Jurassic Park? If you actually look at the logo of Jurassic Park, um, this right here is the lacrimal bone, which is right here. And this is the bump that's actually caused by that ectopterygoid over here. And this is the only um, specimen that has this bump. And so this shows that the illustrators actually used this specimen to create this logo. And in doing so, picked up the idiosyncrasy from the ectopterygoid floating out of position and essentially immortalized it into uh, the logo of the franchise. And so with that, I'm Emily Caggiano and that's all for today.